discover how glucose metabolism impacts neurodegenerative diseases and learn why diet and exercise are vital for protecting your brain and boosting cognitive function. You don't want to miss this insightful conversation with Dr. Kellyanne Niotis on the relationship between insulin resistance and brain health. Essentially, there is this very strong link between diabetes or insulin resistance and brain health. And we do know that in all different neurodegenerative diseases, the brain starts to utilize glucose differently or metabolize glucose differently in different patterns. Um, So in Alzheimer's disease, for example, we really see changes in the way glucose is metabolized in a part of the brain called the temporal lobe as well as the parietal lobe, whereas in Lewy body dementia, we really see changes to the way glucose is metabolized in a part of the brain called the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe. And what's really happening is the brain doesn't have much room to store fuel or substrate. It really has to take up fuel in the form of glucose, which is its preferred method of or preferred food peripherally. And we have lots of insulin receptors in our brain that help our brain metabolize and take up glucose for very important cognitive processes. What happens in Alzheimer's disease is we see a change in the way the brain starts uptaking insulin or regulating insulin signaling and uptaking glucose. And that causes eventual death of the brain cells in those particular regions. If somebody has peripherally high glucose levels, of course, that's going to impact the glucose that's being delivered to the brain. And we know that high levels of blood glucose directly neurotoxic. It can cause neuropathy or injury to our peripheral nerves. And in the same way, it can cause injury to the brain cells, neurons, and astrocytes. So our muscles are the best way that we have to get rid of high glucose. And so things like strength training, making sure that you're really doing resistance work because the more muscle mass you have, the better time your body is going to have at disposing high insulin or high glucose. Also, when you exercise, you're really utilizing up that circulating high glucose levels. Your muscles love to take up glucose. So if you're doing cardio exercise, that's going to really, really help reduce what's circulating and over time your body can adjust and hopefully reduce the insulin resistance, requiring less insulin to be pumped out to get your blood sugar down the level that's healthy. So exercise really, really number one. But along with that, you really have to make sure that you're eating the right food. So of course, having highly processed foods or foods that are in high glycemic indexes like refined carbohydrates, pastas, rice, uh, any sort of added sugar, all of that really is detrimental for metabolic health. It can really lead to issues with accumulating fat around your organs, which is called visceral fat. And we understand that it's not the aesthetic fat or the fat that lives subcutaneously, the fat that we all care about, the way that we look. It's really this fat that's surrounding our organs that is really metabolically unhealthy and secretes a lot of inflammatory chemicals that can impact the brain, can cause brain atrophy, and can impact your cognition. Diet and exercise is everything. We hope you enjoyed this video. To access a free Mastering Brain Health course led by Dr. Richard Isaacson, visit ind.org slash learn. And to directly contribute to IND's research efforts, visit ind.org slash donate.